This is a high school algebra lesson in the forms of the line. This is the second part of it. Okay, the one we're going to talk about now is the form of the line called point slope. Point slope is one of those that's used a lot now and even more in geometry. It's important that we learn it. One of the three main ways. Okay, what does it look like? That's what it looks like. Reminder, uh, forms of the line is just how it's arranged. It doesn't change the value. It doesn't change that it's a perfectly good line. It just looks different. The reason it looks different is it's useful for a different specific purpose. For example, this one makes it really easy to graph if you don't know the intercept. So, um, the point you can see right here. Here, the subscripts, y sub 1, x sub 1, x sub 1, y sub 1, the opposite of it is the specific point on the line. Now, this one's going to give you the most trouble in going through it because you have to have, remember to have your brain on because most of the forms have positives or plus. This has negative, which means the actual form is going to be the opposite of what it looks like until you get used to it, and then it won't be a big deal. Okay, y sub, uh, x sub 1, y sub 1 is a, a specific point of the line. It is any point on the line. Does not matter. All the points work. Because this works for every point on the line, there are an infinite number of correct equations in point-slope form. There's not just one. You'll recall that slope-intercept, there is one correct form only. It's when I, y is isolated and everything simplified. However, <coughs> point-slope form, any point on the line you can stick in here and it'll make a valid equation they'll all simplify to the same equation. It's not any different. It's just using a different point. So it's useful when you have a point. Now if the point you have happens to be the y-intercept, then you'll probably use y equals mx plus b, the function form, or the slope, or the uh, slope intercept form. But lots of times you don't have that. So let's take a couple of examples here. So let's start with a specific point, and we'll take the point 4, negative 3, and a slope of 2. Okay, how are we going to write the equation for that? You know, this one is really simple. Okay, here's we go. So the form is y minus y sub 1 equals slope m times x minus x sub 1. Okay, well... A reminder, in these equation uh, forms, the uh, variable that does not have a subscript, plano y, plano x, is the one that survives to get your, to cut through to your fi final version of the equation. So these two are going to say the same. They represent generally any point on the line. The one with the subscript is a specific point. Again, we use the subscript. doesn't change the value. It just tells us the specific one that we're talking about. Well, we're talking about this one. So we'll call it point 1. And the y value of point 1 is negative 3. And the x value of point 1 is 4. Okay? So let's try that. So this is going to be a negative 3 here, and this is going to be a 4. We'll put it around it. Okay, that's y minus, oops, I need some parentheses, negative 3, because remember, we're not in elementary school anymore. We don't put double signs. We've got to put some parentheses around to make it look right. Okay, and then the slope is 2. Okay, well, that's just almost there. All we have to do is fix this little place right here so that it's y plus 3 equals 2 times the quantity x minus 4. That is point slope form. Okay, let's do it again. How about if we have the point 
six, one, and the slope negative two thirds. Okay, again, the form is y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one. Again, the x and the y that don't have a subscript are the general x and y, can be any point, any point, every point, no, no, no. okay. Specific point we're talking about is the one with the subscript one, the subscript one, because that's the one we're talking about. So we're talking about this one now. That one right there, I see it, that's it. That's the one I'm talking about, okay. So the x value of that is six. The y value is one. So that's going to be a six there when I substitute it. That's going to be a one there when I substitute it. And I'll write the stuff around it. And that's it. That is the point slope form of the line. Now, why is it handy? Well, if I see it like this and I go to graph it, I'll talk about that in a minute. I can see right here that that's the point I'm talking about, and then it's 6 and negative 1. Okay, that's where you're going to run into a problem, because you're going to want to say negative 6 and negative 1. Uh-uh, because -uh, normally that's right. I've been harping on that all year. you got to keep the sign with it. What well, you do got to keep the sign with it. But you remember that the sign was already there. So you're looking at the other part. Okay, so that's a 6 and a 1, which is the point you want. So if all you knew was this equation, you knew it would be 4 and negative 3, because you know the form. The, the, the form is minus, and so that had to have been a minus 3, negative 3, to get it. So the point you're looking for here, but if you're just looking like this, you say, okay, the point is 4, negative 3. Slope is 2. Look at this. Okay, the point is 6, 1, and the slope is negative 2 thirds. Okay? This is point slope form. Now, sometimes you're going to want it to be in a different form. You may want it to be in function form in y equals mx plus b. Okay, so to do that, recall that function form, the main characteristic is that y is isolated. All right, well, how do you make that? Well, that's easy. If you're going to make it into function form, you just isolate y. Okay, well, let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. Isolate the y by subtracting 3. So that way I'll have y equals 2x minus 11. This is function form. We often, however, write function form with an f of x instead of with a y. And so both of these are correct for function form. Okay, over here on this one. Say, uh, well, let's, let's fix it so we can put it into function form 2 in case we want it. So that'd be y minus 1 equals, okay, I'm going to go ahead and distribute negative 2 thirds times x. Negative 2 thirds times negative 6, and y'all are going to get this wrong, so don't get it wrong, so pay attention. Negative times a negative is a positive, and that'll be 2 thirds times 6, and I'm putting 6 over 1, because remember, all fractions got to be fractions. If you want to multiply fractions, they, everything's got to be a fraction. Okay, so what can I do here? I can cancel, and that's 4. Everybody good? Okay, now then, I have simplified all these things, but I now need to isolate y. So that's function form. Remember function form also, sometimes we want to write it as f of x, so this also works for function form. Okay? Here's one that looks a little bit neater. If you want to pause, if you miss some of that, you can catch it here. Okay? Now, let's look at some problems here. Say we've got, this is not going to be hard. Say we've got a point two, one. We've got a slope two. How are we going to do that? Again, one more time. Y minus Y sub one equals the slope times X minus X, X sub one. Plug them in. Here's point one. 
This is going to be x sub 1. This is going to be y sub 1. So here we'll have uh, y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 2. Oh my goodness, that was hard. No, it wasn't. Here, you do some of them. Do these in your cipher. Yes, do them. Don't just look at them and say, oh, I know how to do that. You need the practice. Do the practice. Actually write it down. It'll make it so you remember it. Okay, so please do all of these. Pause the camera. I mean, pause the playback, and I'll put the answers up in just a minute. Okay, here it is. Check them, make sure you're doing them right. All right, let's do the next thing here. If you have two points, how are you going to write an equation in slope-intercept form? Okay, so let's say I've got two points, and my two points are negative 3, 1, and 0, negative 8. Now remember, just like when we're all the time doing slope, it doesn't matter which one you call 2 and which one you call 1, you just name them yourself. I hereby name thee point 2. Thou shalt henceforth forever and this kingdom be known as point 2. Okay, and thou art point 1. All right, I named them. You get to name them however you want to. When you do this, this will be x sub 1 and y sub, y sub 1, x sub 2, and y sub 2. Again, this was point 1, so this is the x value from 1. That's what the sub does. The y value here, this is point 2, so its coordinates are x from point 2, y from point 2, or y sub 2, x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay, let's find the slope. Slope is always m. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. In this case, that's going to be, let's see, that'll be negative 8 minus 1, or the y's, and 0 minus a negative 3. Do this, write it down. Oh, but miss, I can do that in my head. I know, and you can get it wrong in your head. This is the easiest thing to get wrong. I'm not asking you to write it down because it's so hard. I'm asking you to write it down because it's ridiculously easy and you make mistakes. So write it down so you'll do it right. Okay, so this turns out to be negative 9 over 3 because this was 0 plus 3 minus and minus. Okay, which is negative 3. So our slope is negative 3. Okay, my point slope form, again, is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Now here you may be saying, oh, what do I do? How do I know what to put? Okay, you get to use either point you want. You know, I named this one 1 and I named this 2. Oh, uh, well, you can do anything you want. You can pick either one you want. Whichever one looks easier, that's just fine. For the moment, I'm going to choose point 2. So I'm going to put in here y minus the x value, which is going to be negative 8. Oh, yep, put the parentheses. The first time you write it, write it without doing any simplification. That's where you're going to make your mistakes, so be careful and avoid them. Okay, slope is negative 3 x minus 0. Okay, well, that's y plus 8 minus or minus equals negative 3 times x minus 0. Okay, let's go ahead and leave it like this, although many people say it's okay to go ahead and simplify it. It's just negative 3x. Please keep writing it like this with the parentheses so that the points are obvious and they're written there. If you make it just negative 3x, then it's not there. Is that the same value? Yeah, it is. But does it show you the point like we want to know it in uh, slope-intercept form? No, it does not. By the way, this is going to be really handy later in, in geometry when you do circles that you learned this. So make sure you learn it. Okay, so that's what I did.
Well, hmm. Here's that same thing looking a little bit prettier. In case you're writing down and you missed something. Oh, by the way, I say in case you're writing down, you do need to be writing down. This does need to be in your cipher. Reminder, when you're taking the test on this unit, I will be taking up your cipher and grading them. Not for anything particular other than you need to have written everything down. Why? Because that helps you learn and that helps you remember. Okay. In this one, I chose the point zero, negative eight. It works just the same if I choose the other point. So here's an example of what, would it, what it would look like if I chose the other point available. Remember, point slope form, you can use any point you want, an infinite number, and they'll all be correct. Because of that, when I ask you to write something point slope, I'm probably going to tell you the point so I don't have to figure out the infinite number of answers. Okay. So what if I chose the other point? The other point. Okay, so I chose the other point, and I put it in, and I see what I get. Again, I substitute in the x and the y, x sub 1 and y sub 1. The slope is still negative 3, and here's what I get. Okay, notice that that is not the same. However, it is the same. When you work, if you simplify these all out, you'll again eventually get the same equation. Here's what it looks like when you graph it. <clears throat> okay, both of those equations describe the same line. It's just like one of them's talking German and the other's talking French. No, it's not, but not different languages, but it's like that. They're saying the same thing, but just saying it a little bit differently. Okay, they are different equations. They do not look the same, but they do describe the same line. Like that was the German one and that one's the French one. No, I'm just joking on that. When you graph either one of them, this will be it. There are the two points that we started with. Okay, so now we're going to do some practice. Okay, do these. Pause your playback and work all of these. We just worked number 24, hint, you've already got that one, so you should have written it down. Okay, make sure you can do every one of them. You don't have to do both versions of the equation, but hey, if you do, that's a good thing too, and I'll show you that you have them. Do at least one of the, remember, remember for every point, there's an equation that looks different. Like, that's the French German one, that's the French one. That might be Italian, that might be Tagalog. That one might be, oh, I don't know what, a Russian and, and Ukrainian, and they're, they're not happy with one another. And there could be, uh, they're going to look different, and that's fine. It'd be a good exercise to go ahead and do both of them, but you don't actually have to. Okay, pause the camera, excuse me, the playback, and work all of these at least one time. Okay, here's what you should have gotten. There's both ones for the two specific points that you were given. You might need to pause that while you check it. Then we're going to look at how we would graph these things to make sure that it works out fine. Okay, so now for this in class, I'll give you a piece of paper like this, or there will be one posted on RenWeb, and you should download it, cut it so it'll fit, and paste it into your cipher. If you have this paper already, paste it into your cipher now. If you don't, pause it, go print it, cut it so it'll fit. Please don't just fold it over because you can't see what you're doing when you do that. Please go ahead and cut it off or tear it nicely off. Okay, so let's see how it works to graph this. Okay, the first one we're going to graph is going to be this line. y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 1. Okay, what form is this in? Oh, I see! I see. Okay, tell me what it's in. Okay, I hear. Yes, this is in point slope form. You can recognize it. There's a y and a plus or minus a number 
in parentheses, there's an x and a plus or minus a number, and then there's a number on the outside. The number on the outside is the slope, and the two, the two other numbers, the one with the x, the opposite of it is the x-coordinate, the opposite of the y is the y-coordinate. So what we have here then is the slope is 3, and y sub 1 is going to equal 5, not negative 5. Remember, the form itself has a negative. So the number that had to have been plugged in was 5. And here, and the x sub 1 is going to be equal to 1. Okay? So that means that the point we're going to graph from is the point 1, 5. That's, that's Ollie, and that's Jasper. Yeah, y'all quit. Come on. Quit. Oh, it's the mailman. The dogs cannot resist the mailman. Okay, that was Ollie. He has a little bit higher pitch voice than Jasper's the other one. Okay, so we're going to graph it. What do we do? We start with this point. So that's the point 1, 4, 1, Oh, one, five, excuse me. One, one, two, three, four, five. So that's where we're going to start to graph with. That's our starting point, and we're going to count our slope from there. So our slope is three, so that's going to be rise over run. So that'll be written as a fraction, three over one. Okay? Going to start right there. Go here. Rise three, one, two, three, run one. Okay, don't just do it one time because you might count wrong. So do it a couple of times and that way you'll draw your line better anyway. One, two, three, rise, one, run. Do it backwards. Fall. One, two, three, run backwards, one. Fall. One, two, three, run. Okay, put several points. Make sure it looks like they're all in a line. It does look like they're all in a line. And here, draw your line. Draw it long, top to bottom. Okay? And these were counting. Here's rise, run. Everybody see rise, run. See how each time it makes the same triangle, and you can make the same rise over run any place on the line. The line is straight. It will count the same no matter what two points you choose. Now, if you happen to have chosen, say, this point and that point, you could do that. Any two points on the line, it'll still work. But, miss, that's not 3 over 1. Oh, how astute you are. It's not a rise of 3. It's a rise of 12 and a run of 4. Oh wait, 12 over 4 is the same as 3 over 1. Ha ha ha, who'd have thought that? Okay, always works. So, now if you would, I've got a bunch of these for you to do. And you're supposed to do it on the paper you got. If The, uh, the first one is that one right there, so if you did it on your paper, you're already good. You got one done. That was his problem number 14. So please go ahead and do 14 to 19. You just did 14, so if you probably wrote it on your paper, then you are already going along. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Pause the playback. Get it done. Okay, here's what it should look like. You know, if on any of this stuff, you find out I did it wrong, just tell me so I can fix it. I make mistakes, too. Okay, so it should look like this. You not, might need to pause it as you check it. You should have labeled each of your um, original starting points and then counted it out. Okay, let's do some more here. Okay, these three right here. Take the equation, this is the next one's down. From these graphs, write three equations. Okay, go ahead and pause your uh, playback, get them done. 
once you get your equations written, why don't you go ahead and write both of the equations this time? There's just three of them. So write an equation using this point and an equation using this point. So for each one of these, please write two equations. Okay, pause it, get it done. Okay, these are the answers that you should have gotten. Okay, well hopefully you're keeping up. You're gonna let me know if there's a problem. And other than that, here endeth the lesson. But look forward, same time, same channel, for part number three.